Representative Rodney Lyons from District 87, and you're tuned into Horizons with Meet the World Image. Now, now New Orleans has a choice. Download the New Orleans Talk Network app for your mobile device, or listen at www.neworleanstalknetwork.com. This program does not reflect the views and opinions of the New Orleans Talk Network. Viewer discretion is advised. It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I am back with a new episode of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And I have some more company in the studio tonight, and I have somebody calling in on the phone. We're about to have us a nice little conversation all about the art of writing, about books, and then taking those books to the next level, because it's not over once you start writing. Um, you know, you've written a book, you've gotten it published, now you think you just sit back and let all of those riches come in. It doesn't exactly work like that. No, not at all. Not at all. Because broke. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce you to my guests, and we're just going to jump right on in there. First, on the line, we have Louisiana's own, Baton Rouge's own, <laughs> Lorna L.A. Lewis. Yay! 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 <laughs> <laughs> What's up, lady? Oh, so much is up, but I am loving all of it. How are you all? I'm wonderful. wonderful. How you doing? I'm good. Yes. Good, good. <laughs> yes. No, the yes. traffic is horrendous. Yes, it is. I mean, I don't know how it is in Baton Rouge, Lorna, but I've driven through Baton Rouge before, and traffic is nothing to play mm -hmm. out there either. Oh, it's it's something serious. That's why I'm blessed to work from home, and I hey, stay home hey, a whole yes. lot. Yes, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> 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 All right, now sitting right next to me, we have Miss Latracy Drew. She is the, did I say it right? No. I didn't say it right still. <laughs> Let, okay, we're going to spin it. Everyone, sitting right next to me, we have this lovely lady, Miss LaTracy Drooks. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. All right, she is the creator of none other than Black Authors Rock. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay, so we're gonna, let's just talk a little bit about books because you started the platform Black Authors Rock mm -hmm. and Lorna is just doing all types of plays and performances and things with her yes. books, um, poetry, and it's probably even more than that, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whatever I can do with a book, I'm going to do with it. Thank That's you. what I'm talking about. Now, now um, I, yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm turning the last book Full length novel that I wrote was a book called Twilight. Yes. It had nothing to do with vampires. Yes. <laughs> and now I'm turning Twilight into a play. I was 
so shocked. There were like a million people who showed up for the audition. For, yes. yes, I've seen that. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to take a picture, That's but I didn't think awesome. everybody wanted to know, wanted people to know they were there and stuff. But yeah, because we had one rehearsal, well, we had one um, audition on Saturday at the library, and a few people showed up, but we kept getting these calls saying they couldn't make it. And at first, I was going to be like, look, you can't make it. You can't bother to be here. You're just not going to be in the play. But then we talked and we decided to do one more day. So we did um, the auditions on Sunday. And I thought it was just going to be the people who couldn't make it on Saturday. We probably had about 15 people show up. I'm like, where did these people come from? I ran out of forms. Well, that was because of the holidays. Yeah, that's true. That's holidays. true. The holidays messed a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to, um, to seeing this play in action. Um, so yeah, um, we're going to start with you. Lorna, what what kind of tips? Because you've you've been there. You've you've not even done plays. You've done like shows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so and let me tell you, it was a whole new world coming from the novel writing genre. I was not ready, but yes. it was so much fun. I can't say that. Well, one thing I've learned though is that when when you're writing a book, you can make you can have all kinds of scenes. You can, you can um have somebody at school, then at home, then they can be talking on the phone with somebody who's in an entirely different city or state. That's right. You yes, can't do that definitely. With plays. No, well, no. well, you, you could, you kind of can, but but you it, have to it, cut it down on, on some of that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on your budget. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's the hardest part because you think everything in the book is important, and mm -hmm. everything in the book has to be in the play, and you can't do that. So how do you cut that down, Lorna? Oh goodness, that that part was the hardest part for me. Mm. So what did you do? How did you decide on it? Um, I'm sorry, I, my phone was going in and out. Um, <laughs> it was the hardest part for me because, you know, like I said, coming from novel writing, I'm used to elaborating and just telling everything, introducing yes. the scenery, telling how this look and that look, and I did that with my first script. So with the guy who was mentoring me, he read it, and he was like, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to cut a whole lot of this out because. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't want to cut it you out. Are still in the, you're still in the, write, the novel writing mindset. He said, remember, your audience will see what you're saying now. You don't have to tell them the room is blue. They see that it's blue. Yes. You know? <laughs> so room. that kind of stuff, I just had to remember that, okay, try to really tell the story without showing so much, you know, and, you know, with novels, it's like, show, don't tell, show, don't tell. Yes. So now I'm trying to tell without showing because <laughs> they will see it for themselves. So that's, I just had to kind of reverse my mindset. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, you took a different route. Why did you decide to start Black Authors Rock? Because I noticed that Black authors rarely support one another. Mm. And being in the genre of mm -hmm. a writer, you, see, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and it's bad because we're supposed to support one another. Yes. And, and recently we've been hearing all about, let's support, let's black own, let's do the black money, keep it in-house. Yes. But that still doesn't help when it comes down to an author. And if an author doesn't sell any books, then they don't make any money. Absolutely. And so people feel, if I don't yeah. buy your book, then I, that's not support. But I'm teaching individuals that you can share a post. Yes. You can show up. You can support. You can share a flyer. You can put it on your Facebook or your social media. I mean, people don't understand that support doesn't always cost money, mm -hmm. but it's just being there. Right. I did a Facebook Live about that one day, about mm -hmm. ways that you can support your favorite author or entrepreneur without ever spending a dime. And what just like you said, sharing a post takes nothing from you. Right. Mm -hmm. that is so it doesn't exactly. cost anything to share a post or to even comment right. on it. Yes. Like, oh, congratulations, this is great. You know, that <laughs> yeah. doesn't yeah. cost you anything. Nothing at all. <laughs> and a lot of people, they're stagnant, but then they want someone to support them. Or right. come out to their event. Mm. Or, you know, or come to their play. And so... I I've saw I saw that not only working with black authors but also white authors. But mm -hmm. I realized that the need was with black authors and I was the first person who could tell them. Well, um we have somebody watching. Um um Karen Canonis Miller, she is 
awesome. She's like the godmother of promotion. She this was before social media came out. She was selling all these books, and I asked her one day. I, I met her at the um, Baltimore Book Festival mm-hmm. one year, and I was like, "How were you able to sell all these books? Because you know back then all we yeah. had was email, email. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with a dial-up." Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But she told me she kept flyers everywhere, and if she saw a blank spot on a wall or on a bench, she put a poster. She put a poster right there, or she'll put a fly right there. She promoted herself everywhere she went, and um, she made. She's laughing because she <laughs> she's laughing you know. right now, <laughs> but she knows it's right. But she said that there are some authors who really do support each other. Yes, and that that's true. that's wonderful. I mean, there are a, a lot of authors, but my thing is, I've always said. Maybe all three of us are doing a book signing together. They buy your book. That doesn't mean that they're not going to buy my book right. and Lorna's book as right. well because most hardcore readers are going to read more than one book, believe it or true. not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if they can't afford to buy more than one book, maybe they can't afford to buy all three of our books, I'm going to still give them a flyer or a bookmark or something so mm-hmm. next time they're ready to buy a book, they can buy mine. We don't have to fight with each other for that one sale. Exactly. It's all about collaboration and not competing. Absolutely. I mean, I just had Definitely. a run into me at the Dollar Tree, and she said, you know that lady in New Orleans? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> she said, are you going to see her anytime soon? Because I need some of her shirts. And I was like, well, what size shirts do you need? And how many do you need? And she was serious, and I just started laughing because it tickled me because... She met Rhonda at one of, of my events, and that was back in June. Yes. And she was just like, uh-uh, I need the T-shirt. I need the T-shirt. And I'm like, she wasn't prepared at that present moment, but she still remained wow. relative. Yeah. And so she's like, uh-uh, I need a T-shirt. I have a book club. I need, you know, we need to keep <laughs> it going. And so it is. It's about relationships <laughs> and to complement each other and not compete. Yes, so. absolutely, absolutely. Now, Lorna, you came to... um. My event that I did last year for the Zeta for the Zeta convention, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Now I'll tell you yes. that was some true collaboration. I I think all of you guys oh, they, yes. all of them brought about a hundred books each. Wow. And all of them sold all hundred of those books. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, so yes. um tell, talk to me about that. How did you guys do that? The main thing, like you said, was collaborating. Um, I shared a table with Kay. So when people would stop, you know, sometimes I'm talking to someone and someone else is walking up where she's talking to those people, but she has my cards. So yeah, she's yeah. telling them about her books and she's giving them my card and saying, you may want to stop and talk to Lorna too because she does this. And, you know, sometimes we are asked, you know, what's your favorite genre? Yes. So if they say, um, you know, fiction, love story, what have you, then she'll say, oh, well, you need to talk to Lorna because that's what she writes, because she was a different genre. So yes. it was just about collaborating and, you know, the energy. We were standing out in front of our table. We were speaking to people. We were smiling, you know, just making small talk as they pass by because, you know, I'm from Louisiana. and We like to talk. Yeah. So, you know, just, hey, girl, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, was, it was the energy, I really feel, that drew people to our table and, you know, caused them to stop and want to hear more from, you know, what both of us were selling. Right. And we didn't, you know, we didn't always make a sale, but like Rhonda said, we gave out all our cards, you know, and some people did inbox me afterwards and told me, you know, I just purchased your book on um, on Amazon. I'm going to let you know how I like it, you know. So awesome. even if they don't buy it then, it doesn't mean that that's not a sale. It may be a sale for another day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have to take a quick break. That was a very good segue into yes. taking a break. <laughs> And when we get back, I would love to talk with you guys about some of the work that you guys are promoting right now. So um, you guys stay there and you guys all stay there. And what I want you to do while we're gone is, as I always ask you to do, I want you to like this um, show. I want you to share the show. I want you to subscribe to us on the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube channel. And then, of course, I want you to comment. Let's keep this conversation going. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will be right back. Your customers, our listeners, 
could be hearing about your business right now. Yeah, right now. Don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. Call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates. NewOrleansTalkNetwork.com. We provide the people, you provide the business. Y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new, exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The New Orleans Talk Network, now on your mobile device, on your computer, in your ear, and interactive. It's new, it's innovative, and it's on your mobile device. Android, iPhone, iPad, and on your computer. Take us wherever you go, because we're interactive. 504-341-TALK. That's 504-341-8255. New year, new show. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new, exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The New Orleans Talk Network, now on your mobile device. On your computer. In your ear. And we're back. This is your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. I am sitting here with the Tracy Droops. Yes! <laughs> yes. She is the creator, the founder, the CEO of Black Authors Rock. And we also have on the line Miss Lorna L.A. Lewis, who is an author, a playwright. She's a TV producer. I mean, I'm not sure what else to call you, girl. A mogul. Yes. <laughs> You're a mogul. <laughs> writing coach. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, yes and yes. a writing coach. Um, let's talk about that. Yes. You actually are a writing coach. You actually hold classes in Baton Rouge. Yes. Yes, I do. Virtual classes. So wherever you are, you can come. You can join us on our classes. Right now, I have, I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients, so I have not been doing the classes. But um, I teach writing. You know, I'm an educator at heart. And yes. so it made sense to combine the two things I love, teaching and writing. So that's what I do. I teach women mainly how to tell their story. A lot of my writers are writing memoirs. So it's telling their stories in a in engaging, in an engaging way, but still getting the message out, you know, because you don't want people to get, be so entertained that they miss the message. Absolutely. Right. So the, that's what we've been working on, and it's been a it's been a ride because you know these are brand new. I've never picked up a, a pencil, right. a pen to write anything other than you know work stuff. Women now, it's part but of the class. It. Also, maybe managing expectations because there are people who they want to write a book and they want to write about their lives, but then mm -hmm. um, they expect to be able to sell a thousand books, a million books because they've written about their lives. Yeah. So, and right. then they don't and understand that up front. as much. I'm sorry? I, I tell them that up front. Yes. You know, it, the, the truth of the matter is, unless you're a celebrity, nobody really care that much, you know, other than your family and friends. Right. So that's why, we, that's why I teach creative nonfiction, because their, their books read like a novel, but it's, it's true. You know, so we put in there that it's based on actual events. 
but it has to be engaging, like I said, enough that people will keep reading because they don't know you well enough to want to know your story. Absolutely. So you have to find a way to draw them into your story. And, you know, word of mouth is still the best form of advertisement. So once they start selling to a few people, they'll talk about it to more people, and that's how they get their sales. But I let them know up front, this is on you how, how well this book sells or not. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, um, this I remember, I'm never going to forget, this man wanted me to help him to write his life story. And each chapter was a different age. So chapter one was when he was mm. eight. Chapter two was, was when he was nine. Chapter three. No. Oh, wow. <laughs> he really got mad at me because I'm like, um, this isn't, this isn't going to settle. Right. <laughs> like, did it connect in any kind of way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very upset with me, but you know what? Oh, well, sometimes we have to learn. Yeah, ourselves. you want to tell them the truth, that's for sure. Right, right. And I, I've never believed in just taking somebody's money just for the sake of, you know, trying to gas your head exactly. up and take their money. And they get mad at you when yes. you don't take their money. Yes. yes. <laughs> You're like, yes. I, I'm just like, I'm like, that, that book cover is not appealing. But that's what I want. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't think that's gonna yeah. sell. Mm -mm, that's you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Who is your target reader? All you can do is guide. Exactly. That's you true. can't make them do anything, but you're right. You can actually provide guidance. I mean, and is that some what mm -hmm. you do with Black Authors Rock? Yes, and they still don't listen. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm joking about it, but in in reality. A person believes what they want to believe. Yes. And so we may have the expertise to teach them the right way and guide them, but it's up to them to take our expertise. And so I I applaud you for being a writer's coach because huh, I think writers are worse than church people sometimes. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, yeah. I don't want to listen. This is what I want and this is it. And so, yeah, that's the hard part. Now, what I do, yeah, I do is. love the fact that you're both actually talking about writing because, um, unfortunately, we do have a lot of authors out there who they want to write their book, they want to get it done quickly, and they want to promote it. And um, so, um, sometimes your writers work or writers workshops turn into more like promotion workshops because they're so busy trying to promote right. the book and get it out there that they often sometimes forget about the actual art of writing. So I appreciate the fact that you're both. I'm really focusing on that. Yes. And that's what I tell my clients. You know, when they start talking about marketing and promoting, I'm like, you don't even have a book. Like, you don't even have a chapter. Can we get a chapter first? <laughs> first things first. Right. Let's get this book out. <laughs> right. Now, what are some of the uh, most common mistakes that you might see that, um, that a lot of new writers are making? Something that might just be an easy fix. I know for me, and I just had this conversation with my um, one of my writers, a lot because I deal with a lot of professional women, Yes, they are used to writing, you know, in that manner, in a professional way. Yes. So even with dialogue, it, it sounds just bland, you know, and one, um, one of my writers told me today, she was like, um, I noticed you changed my words to contractions. She said, I was so in the mindset that I can't use contractions because in grad school they had a right. fit when we use contractions. Oh. I said, Yeah, but we talk in contractions. Like we don't we don't complete whole words. <laughs> <laughs> that is not how we speak. <laughs> so you want to relate to your reader. You don't want the reader to feel like they're sitting in this lecture, you know. Right, right. So that to me, that's the main one, getting them in that creative mindset. They're so technical. Yes. So te you know, it's freedom in writing creatively, you know. There's some rules you can break and it's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there are some rules that we can break, but we have to know the rules in order to be able to break, break them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You must know them first. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, no, I was going to ask you, uh, for me, I have found that new writers often don't believe the experts. Mm. And they want to mm -hmm. though, see, <laughs> they want to tell the experts how to do it. So I have a team full uh, of great people that assist me in publishing. And they
they can get their first or second draft back and edit it. Mm-hmm. And they would say, well, I don't want this. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. It went through the editor. It went through twice. You still have to make corrections. No, I just, <laughs> I don't like it. Let me, let me take it back to the way that it was. Or they'll wait until it gets to, to the approval point. Yeah. And then they'll say, no, I just think I want to start over and I just want to write it. Okay, it's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. You know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. They don't look at the investment versus in time and in money. Right. And they want to dictate every single step. And I'll have to tell you, because um, I've always been a pretty good writer. Mm-hmm. And um, sometimes I can be a, little, be a little bougie about my writing. Nope. I'm not nope. going to lie. I can be a little bougie sometimes. And sometimes <laughs> I'll, I will write my book. And I'll know I might have a couple of um, typos in it. No, nothing wrong with that, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can fix the typo. Right. But then when I see mm-hmm. them tell me that I should have written it another way, I'll be like, well, who are you? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm, I'm like, I know you're not talking to me. I write. <laughs> this is what I do. And then I had to <laughs> I had to step back and I had to think about it. And I was like, mm, you know, I guess they were right. <laughs> but you're not going to tell them that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, okay, I guess I could have written it a little differently. You know, I think sometimes we just have to sit and think about it. You know, we're Mm -hmm. not always going to be right. And often we are so close to our writing that we we overlook the mistakes. Mm -hmm. I have to 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 read over my writing because I'll skip a word and not realize that I skipped the word. Because that's how you Mm -hmm. write. Right, Mm -hmm. exactly. My eyes know that that's what I meant it to say. Mm -hmm. So I have to step away. I'll send it to a great editor, and I'll come back like, oh, shoot, okay. I don't know why I wrote it like that, or what mm-hmm. was I thinking? Or maybe I just <laughs> you know what I love? I love um, Microsoft Word, you know, because it'll read it back to you. Yes. yes. So I've gotten, I've started doing, you know, I still use an editor, of course, but before I send it to the editor, I started listening without looking mm-hmm. at, you know, so that I can hear it being read back to me and I'm able to pick up on more versus reading it myself. That's a Even great reading idea. it out loud myself, I still miss the That's um, a, now what what is that you're using? I'm gonna have to get that. Microsoft Office. It's right. on Microsoft Word. Really? Mm-hmm. There's a uh huh, there's the I forgot what it's called, but oh. it it reads it, I think it's called read aloud if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. Oh. But um it'll <laughs> read it back to you. I'm gonna use that. Thank you, girl. <laughs> now I want to read to you what Karen just um, chimed in and says. She said um, a mistake she sees a lot of times is story structure. Writers need to focus, know their beginning, middle, and end, and then drop pearls all the way through the story. They have to focus on story structure, and I think sometimes we forget about that. You know, maybe we just want to rush right to the end. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to jump right to the mm-hmm. um, to the conflict. And we forget to build up to that conflict. Mm-hmm. You have to draw them. Yes. In. Mm-hmm. You have to draw them. In. Yeah, and make them want it. to read your story. Mm-hmm. Instead of putting it down after the first couple pages. <laughs> exactly. Now, along with that, sometimes <laughs> sometimes writers will take too long to get to the point of their story. Uh-huh. And then, I mean, mm-hmm. I know people who say, I'm only going to read the first hundred pages and then I'm putting the book down. I've, I, I have less patience. I've, I've said that I'll read the first 50 pages. And if I don't, if, mm-hmm. if it hasn't grabbed me, then I'll stop reading. Mm-hmm. But I try to keep that in mind when I write. But so you have to know who yeah. your target reader is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's time to take another break already. I mean, I don't, I think Tara oh, is wow. speeding up the clock or something. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but we're going to take a quick break. And then we really are going to talk about some of the work that you all are promoting right now. So um, we'll be right back. So don't forget. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and you are watching Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. We'll be right back. Listen up. Your customers, our listeners, could be hearing about your business right now yeah right now don't miss out on the opportunity to advertise with neworleanstalknetwork.com call our business department today at 504-475-4793 to hear about our great rates neworleanstalknetwork.com 
We provide the people, you provide the business. New year, new show. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. New year, new show. Hey, what's up, boy? And we're back. <laughs> this is your girl, Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson. I am sitting here talking with Pasta. <laughs> the Tracy Drukes. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I'm also speaking with <laughs> the mogul herself, yes. Lorna L.A. Lewis. <laughs> hey, Lorna, you still with us, girl? See you here. <laughs> She just cut <laughs> yeah, she up. I'm, I, I cut up, you know. This is what I do. You know? yes. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Lorna, um, tell me about um, what are you promoting right now? Because what you're promoting now is a little different from what you were promoting last year at the Zeta Convention. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, what I'm promoting now is actually a novella. It's called Torn, A Daughter's Love. Uh, this book, <laughs> I had so much fun writing this book, even though it was so emotional writing this book. I'm about to say, how you have fun uh, writing a book called Torn, A Daughter's right. Love? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's not like the secrets that I'm used to writing. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was watching a, a television show, and on the television show, uh, the husband and wife were both trying to look, they were both looking for money. There was a briefcase of money and they were both looking for this briefcase of, briefcase of money because she needed it to give to these people to save her brother. He needed it to give to these people to save his best friend who was like a brother. So, you know, I always tell people I come up with so many ideas while I'm washing dishes. So I was sitting there washing dishes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why I don't ask. I don't know. But I was sitting watch, standing washing dishes, and I was just thinking about that, you know, the how difficult that decision must be. And so I was thinking, okay, what if it wasn't, you know, a friend, or what if it was family? What if it was family for both of them? And then just playing with ideas was like, well, what if it was one person who had to choose between family? I knew I didn't want to do children because just the thought of a parent having to choose between their children was just more than I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. So I chose parents. Maybe it was easier for me to write parents since both of mine are deceased. I'm not sure. I don't know how easy it would have been to write that if they were both living, you know. But in the story, both of her parents need a kidney. Both of her parents are, one has high blood pressure, the other has diabetes. And they live with these diseases for so long that, you know, dialysis is starting to take its toll and they need a kidney to order, in order to live a viable life. Right. And everyone has been tested, her brothers, her sisters, the community. And unfortunately, in the black community, it's hard to be donors because we have so many health issues, including being overweight, you know, overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes ourselves. So um, for a lot of people. So, you know, everyone was ruled out, and Angel, who's the oldest daughter, ended up being the only match for both of her parents. So that's why it's called Torn, the daughter's love, because it's like, you know, it's not like 
she lived with her mom and never saw her dad or right. vice versa. She she grew up with both of her parents. She loved both of her parents. So mm. it just it became a an emotional tale of a daughter having to choose whose life to save. Wow. So that's torn. So is that um <laughs> so um first with this being a novella then, um how long is your novella? Because novellas are usually a little shorter. Mm-hmm. Uh this one is seventy something pages, I believe. Oh wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed that people are into yeah. the shorter stories. People are just too busy these days, I guess. And that's what I thought about too. It's really, really hard for me now because I have six clients and I'm constantly, you know, they're constantly sending in things for me to review and send back to them. Because I'm doing that so much now, it's hard for me to sit. And I think I'm just, I guess it's a patience thing. It's like, I want to get stuff out. I don't want to sit and write a 300 page book. <laughs> to me, the, I don't even know how I did that then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Books do you have now? I have um, three full-length novels and uh, the Daily Devotional, which is a year's worth of daily readings. Nice. And I have a short story, um, Sign Sealed Delivered. No, the short stories you really got a hold on me and Torn. And I'm working on a few now. <laughs> mm. But these, I think, are going to be short stories. Okay. Now we have a video here. Now um, the video has to do with Believe torn. Is that correct? <laughs> what would you say? Huh? What would you say? I said those are actually harder to write. The novellas. Oh yeah, th they are harder to write because you're trying to crush everything. And how many words is this particular novella tor torn? Uh oh, I don't even remember. Hmm. I want to say it's about 40,000. Okay. I don't know. So you could almost write it during NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. National Novel Writing Month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I participated with, in that with my, well, not, not officially. You know, I didn't <laughs> sign up through the website and all of that. Right. But um, I did a miniature version of it because I have an online writing group on Facebook. Okay. Um, L.A. Lewis Writing Warriors, nice. and in that group, we I did 500 words because again, these are women who who are just getting into the writing, you know, the writing thing. So I didn't want to say, okay, we're going to write 1,600 words a day. <laughs> and they'll be like, no, we're not. <laughs> so we did 500 words, and I told them, you know, and if you exceed, if the if the feeling is going and the mojo is crunk. Yes. Keep going, you know, so we, so at least they felt a sense of accomplishment because 500 words is really not that hard once you get started, you know, Absolutely. before you know it, you've reached 500 words. Absolutely. Well, we do have a video that features, um, a poem from, um, Torn. Yes. It's actually a, a excerpt from one of the chapters. Okay. So, um, let's see, we're going to roll that footage. And um, check it out. The pounding of my feet against the pavement stirred up every emotion I tried to contain over the past few weeks. I felt as if my body was completely full and ready to burst. So I did. I ran and cried and allowed every thought I'd pushed down to surface. I cried for the little girl inside of me who still needed her mom's advice on so many things. I cried for the little girl who needed her hero, her daddy, to remind her that as long as he had breath in his body, there was nothing nothing she'd ever need or want. I cried for the future bride who would need a substitute to walk her down the aisle or would place a flower in the empty chair her mom would have occupied. I also cried for the grown woman who simply could not choose between the two people she loved the most. Wow. You put a little, um, a little passion behind your words. So um, I think you do a little acting too, huh? Oh, no, I think I better stay behind the camera. 
I'm a I'm a very dramatic reader. Look, I taught kindergarten, okay? I had to really get into the reading to draw the children in and have them sit down. So I'm very dramatic when it comes to reading. <laughs> well, it's not, it's beautiful. It it really is. And um Thank you, you. Um Karen said your your book sounds amazing. And then Henry chimed in and said he wants to be a part of your virtual class. Okay, well, I will definitely get with him. I'm, I probably will do another one sometime in February, but I'll inbox him some information. See, I love it when we can connect people here on Horizons mm -hmm. with Meet the World Image Solutions. That's yes, amazing. definitely. All right, so we're going to, before we go to break, I do want LaTracy to jump in because you have two books that you're going to be promoting during the Black History Month Literary Weekend <laughs> that I, <laughs> what you heard about? <laughs> You wrote these books. You can't who about them. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I'll have to give you the history in a second. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So since we're going to take a break in a minute, we're going to talk about those books. Mm -hmm. But you have another book. Yes. Testimony on the journey to I am. That's the one you wanted to talk about. Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> See, she threw me. She threw me to the left. Like, look, we're going to talk about these. <laughs> well, what's Destimony about? Destimony is actually a compilation, an anthology full of women who have decided to tell their stories mm. and share their stories from a place of growth in their journey to I am and having a relationship with God. Mm. And so for me, um, I shared about being a public figure and mental health as a black woman. A lot of people don't speak about it. Um, it is shunned upon a lot of times. And for me, I needed to share my story from my perspective uh, in a way of healing yes. and not in a way of pain or looking for sympathy. So this book is eye-opening, and it will draw people in and build their faith while they're on their own personal journey. So you did you write this book, I'm sure, with some other women? Who are some, who are some of the other women? Dr. Dina. Yes, Dr. <laughs> Dina is actually the presenter of this book, okay. and uh, it was it was eye opening. It was one of my hardest books to write. I'm quite sure because you basically had to kind of strip bare mm -hmm. in front of all these people. Oh yeah, you don't know who's going to judge you, who you're going to motivate, who you're going to inspire. Yes, and and throughout that process, I even spoke about how people went against me mm -hmm. and how they. They talked about me and ridiculed me and even put my business out there wow. to hurt me. And I knew mm -hmm. that I wasn't the only one who had ever experienced that. But being a black woman, we rarely talk about mental health. Yeah. Uh, and I grew up with mental health not even being an issue. It was either you're going to pray or you're going to drink or you're going to smoke or, you, you know, you're just going to cope the best way that you know how. Mm -hmm. and so wow. That was an amazing journey, just writing it. And I fought Dina on it. Oh, I fought her. I'm sure. Yes, I did. But I tell you, she's she's a very, very positive person. That girl keeps a smile on her face. Yes, she does. Yeah. I met her a few years ago. Um, I was invited by the Zetas in Korea to speak at um, their Black History Month event. Wow. And I met Dina there. And it's like we just clicked mm -hmm. automatically. And we just kept in touch ever since then. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I like sometimes I think she's my sorority. We're not even in the same sorority. <laughs> yeah. She's actually Lorna's soror. Okay, okay. See, yes. That's all right. I'm going to steal Dina from you. <laughs> she's going to be both of our sorority. In the book world only. <laughs> but she is. She's an amazing woman. Yes, she is. She really is. Wonderful girl. But we're going to take a break. And when we get back, I do want to hear about those other books. Yes. Okay, y'all heard it here. We're going to talk about these other two books that I don't know why she's hesitating about, but these are books we need to know. Yes. Yes. I'm ready. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to be right back. <laughs> this is pro I think this is the last break of the night. <laughs> yes. So we're going to hear about these books, and then, of course, I'm going to let you know what Meet the World Image Solutions is working on. We have so many great things in yes. store. Yes. yes, I can't wait. So we'll be right back. Stick with us. We only have about... 10, 13 minutes left in the show, so 
You ain't doing that for 10, 13 minutes. Go ahead and watch the show. We'll be right back. <laughs> the Horizons with Meet the World Image. Dr. Rhonda M. Lawson, and I'm coming back at you with the new year of Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions. And this year, we're moving to Monday night with brand new exciting guests and engaging literary conversation. And we want our listening audience to be there with us because this is going to be a year you will not forget. Catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m., right here on the New Orleans Talk Network. And you can also reach us on the Meet the World Image Solutions Facebook page, the Meet the World Image Solutions YouTube page, and we're on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. So catch us every Monday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. See you there. The New Orleans Talk Network, now on your mobile device, on your computer, in your ear, and interactive. It's new, it's innovative, and it's on your mobile device, Android, iPhone, iPad, and on your computer. Take us wherever you go, because we're interactive. 504-341-TALK. That's 504-341-8255. The New Orleans Talk Network, now on your mobile device. On your <laughs> All right, I am sitting here talking with author and advocate <laughs> and preacher, oh Lord, <laughs> Latracy Droops. And I also have on the phone Lorna L.A. Lewis, the mogul, yes. the legend. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, let me take a trip to Baton Rouge. I'm I ready. know. We, we need to go ahead and just make a road trip. Let's we all meet it. up. Let's mm -hmm. do that. Let's do it. Yeah. So Let's I'm go a, on tour. Yes. We, let's have our own yes. little tour. <laughs> you know what? Okay, we'll talk after the show. We'll yes, talk after the show. Yes. yes, I'm all for it. <laughs> okay, so um, okay. Tell, tell me, you, have, you, you wrote a couple of books that where you're giving advice to authors. What's some of that advice that you give? Well, authors go into the whole process of writing with unrealistic expectations most times. They believe that they can quit their job and become a millionaire off their one book. And so I have decided to put a book together to give them ideas and tips and secrets within the industry so that they can make $10,000 in 10 days. I want to learn how to make ten thousand dollars in ten days. Me too. Well, the, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that you have to be consistent. Yes. You have to be consistent, and one of the main things that you have to do as an author is to have an email list. People do not believe. Uh, oftentimes, you write a book, you need to set it up as a business, mm -hmm. and so within that, you have to gain not only throwing out the flyers, telling everybody what you wrote about but also gain their information, whether it's a free opt-in with giving them excerpts of your book, mm -hmm. or if it's an audio book, or even if it's just giving them a checklist of the things that you wrote about, build a relationship with the people. Absolutely. You can't just jump in bed with them and say, hey, buy my book. No, we have to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so in that, if you have that relationship built before your book is even published, yes. then it's not so difficult for you to sell your book once it's done. And so I, I give the example of T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes will put the cover of his book out six months to a year before his book is even written. And they're like, oh, well, he has so much money. Yes, he may have the money, but he built the relationship. Yes. He will do speaking mm -hmm. engagements and tell people, pre-order my book today. You know, that type of thing. And so he's not only pre-selling his book, but he has an expected date that his book is ready to be. Right. And so I give individuals hope, but I also give them those realistic expectations so that they can make that money. And then I show them the screenshots behind the fact that I've done it. And so they're like, mm. wait a minute, 
you did it. How you do you know that type of thing? And I was just going to ask you that because somebody else is going to say, Well, all that sounds easy in theory, but it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you that it is. Um I that's gonna have to be another show. But for me, <laughs> um, one of my tactics was a play on Facebook Live. Nice. And they were like, wait a minute, how does she do that? Well, you have to use what you have to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Build those relationships. If your target yeah. audience is on Facebook, then build that up and get their information. And so, and you have to touch a person at least seven times in order for them to have a relationship with you. Don't Absolutely. bug them, but build a relationship. And that's, um, social media has kind of lulled us sometimes into thinking that if we post it one time, everybody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. even, even with the auditions for this play, we posted it and reposted it for probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I shared it. Yes, and, and, you, and you shared it. I still had somebody say, I didn't see it until yesterday. That's because mm -hmm. of the way that social media is set Exactly. Up. We, so we have to. Some people are going to see it all the time and they're going to get sick of us. But there's going to be somebody who's going to see it for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue right. to post it. And you have to build a tribe. Yes. Like, we are on this show, but... We are so good at saying, hey, well, I have this going on. All right, well, I have something going on. Okay, and, and it's it's like clockwork. We just share. It's not mm -hmm. a, oh, girl, I'm not going to share because I don't want my people to know. Uh, no, no. Right. What you doing? Let me share it. Let me get it out there. And so mm -hmm. you have to build that community. You have to build that relationship. And so that is one book. The other book is 10,000 Things um, Every Black Author Should Know. Right. And people take for granted relationships. And so, Lorna, you are an expert in writing and you teach that, but you have transferable mm -hmm. skills. And so, it, and if anybody knows Rhonda, you publicize everything and you <laughs> will get it out there and you are the first to <laughs> right. know. And so it's like, okay, if you are a writer, these are two people that you need to know. Right. And so, don't look at Okay, I have to know everything and do all things. No? Okay, well, what do you know? What's your expertise? What do you do? How do you do it? So you yes. have to break down those gifts and talents of other people and utilize yes. those things for Absolutely. your good. Absolutely. So I'm excited yeah. about February. Girl, me too. Me too. And that's a great segue into what we're doing. Yes. So the Black History Month Literary Weekend, for those of you who haven't heard, will be February 28th and 29th. Right here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And one year, Lorna Lewis will be a part of it. Yes. <laughs> um, look, once this boy graduated, I don't have basketball games every year. <laughs> yeah, once her son graduates from high school, she will be a part of this event. Uh, but for right now, she's being an excellent mother. Yes, she is. And she is yes, supporting she her son. And I can't be mad at that. No, not but, at all. <laughs> but February 28th and 29th, as, as we mentioned, the Tracy will be a part of it. She is one of 11 featured authors who are going to be a part of this event. And we will also be featuring a free writer's workshop taught by none other than New Orleans' own Brian W. Smith. Yes. So I'm super oh, excited nice. about that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, see, you need to go ahead and come on out. Just, it's, it's just the weekend. You know, his game is on that Friday. You have Saturday. Let's yes. get it. <laughs> And um, not only yes. that, we have um, a free writer's workshop, which I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a mass book signing at Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a literary jazz brunch, um, my yes. goodness, um, which is going to be hosted by Oliver O.T. Thomas, who is a very well-known um, DJ right here in New Orleans. Um, well, I don't know if I can call him a DJ. He's a talk show host. Yeah. Yes, but he's, he's on the radio. Well. He's a mogul as well. There you go. Yeah, he has there we go. <laughs> So um, he, he's going to be here um, supporting us. And then we're going to have the world premiere of Twilight, the stage play, which is based on my best-selling novel, uh, which is about a teenage girl who was raped by her much older boyfriend and the process that she went through to as she works to get past what happened to her and it starts to come into her own and learn self-love. So it's a very beautiful, beautiful play that we want you all to be a part of. In fact... We are really wanting teenagers to fill the house because this is a story that every young teenager should hear. And they should mm -hmm. actually hear this. So we're looking forward to that. The Literary Weekend. Yes, all of that will be a part of the Black History Month Literary Weekend. Yes. And 
um, the eighth and ninth grade essay contest. The um, applications are out. If you go yes. to the Meet the World Image Solutions um, website, that's www.mtwimagesolutions.com, you will find the um, application for the eighth and ninth grade essay contest. This is free money. Free money. We want you to be able to get this. We talked also a lot about writing mm -hmm. um, and about um, developing your platforms. If you are looking for um, editing assistance, if you're looking mm -hmm. for a one sheet or a media kit, or maybe you just need some publicity help, you can contact us. We are doing a 50% off special for yes. the rest of this year up until Ooh. December 20th. So that's another couple of weeks mm -hmm. to take part of, take advantage of these deals. This mm -hmm. is my Black Friday Extended. And I like yes. to call it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then we've also started a partnership with Swagger Magazine. So for only $60, you can get all kinds of publicity. You can get a 30-minute um, interview on this show. You can also get a website feature um, on, a swag, on the Swagger Magazine um, website. Um, all for $60. You'll get an email blast as well as social media promotion. So we need you to also be a part of that. So Karen just asked for the dates again. The dates for the Black History Month Literary Weekend are February 28th and 29th. And we also are taking a group of folks to Tennessee to see the Saints play the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> we need you guys to be a part of this trip. <laughs> There's so much going on with Meet the World Image Solutions. And we really want you to be a part of it. So make sure you give us a call. Contact us either by email, Facebook, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, phone, and um, ask us for more information about this about this trip because we need you all to be a part of it. So that is all we have going on. Don't forget to pick up Testimony mm -hmm. by Miss LaTracy Droot. And don't forget to pick up Torn, yes. A Daughter's Love by Miss Lorna L.A. Lewis. So I want to thank you both yes. for being a part of the show. I Thank can't believe so it's much. time to end it already. It's already eight o'clock. So I know that went by so fast. <laughs> it really does. It really does. <laughs> but I want to thank both of you ladies for being a part of it. For those jewels that you dropped for a lot of the new authors who may be yes. watching the show, you've actually given them something that's going to help them to improve their writing and to move along their uh, writing journey. So, um, for, uh, thank you for being so open, so transparent, and being willing to share because it's not. Nobody's just going to buy one book. That's true. That's so we right. might as well just continue to pave the way for the authors behind us because if the authors in front of us didn't pave the way for us, we yeah. wouldn't be here to pave the way for other people. And that's why I'm so exactly. glad that Karen was a part of this um, because she was one of the veteran authors who took me under her wing and helped me. So um, I'm really honored to have I her I love on the show. Karen. Yes. I just connected with her on social media. Yes. Connect, mm -hmm. connect with Karen E. Canonis Miller. She is a wealth of writing information. Okay. Yes, <laughs> All right. she is. Okay, see, see, Lorna already knows. Uh, see, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, y'all. Thank you once again for being a part of the show. Next week, we will have a live show. And when I say live, this is live. Yes. But I'm talking about we're going to have a performance here. We're going to be interviewing a musician who's going to actually perform for us. And we're going to have a live studio audience next week. So if you would like to be a part of that, give me a call, contact me, and I'll let you know how you can be a part of that show. But tomorrow, next week is going to be awesome, and we need you all to be a part of it. So stick with us. Lots of things going on with Horizons, with Meet the World Image Solutions. Lots of things going on with LaTracy and with Lorna, and we want you all to be a part of it. So thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed week, and we will see you next Monday. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>
and we want you to be a part of it. If you have a book, an event, or a business that you would like to promote right here on Horizons with Meet the World Image Solutions, contact us at www.mtw.com. Image Solutions.com or 